Hi everybody, it's Good Friday and uh, it's important that we just stop to reflect upon something of what Good Friday means and how we're to live in response to Good Friday and of course Easter Sunday. One of the drawbacks of doing these recordings only on Monday to Friday is that I don't get to record a, an Easter morning uh, message but I did just want to try and kind of think about the whole message of Easter uh, today. Uh, to do that, I'm going to reflect on a couple of phrases in Luke uh, chapter 23. So Luke chapter 23 and verse 20, uh, 34 says this, Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they divided up his clothes by casting lots. Father, forgive them. Who was he talking about? Who was he? Who did he have in his mind as he was asking for the Father's forgiveness? Well, the obvious um, and kind of usual answer is that he was looking at the people who were directly involved in his crucifixion, the soldiers that had hammered the nails in, the, the, the soldiers that were, were casting lots at his feet to divide his, his clothes up uh, in front of him. But I have a hunch that Jesus may have been thinking about a few other people as well, because Jesus has an eternal and a, a kind of a perspective that transcends time and place and energy. And I wonder if Jesus was thinking about you and me. I wonder if Jesus had in mind the billions of people who would follow him and seek to follow, to, who, sorry, who would come after him, but, but particularly those who would seek to follow him and he, who he longs to follow him in, in, in obedience and in, um, in our journey of faith. I wonder if he had in mind the people like you and me who get things wrong, who, who make a mess of life, who, who make a mess of the Christian life. But Jesus was still able to say, Father, forgive them. They don't really realise what they're doing. They just don't get it. So Lord, forgive them and help them to work at being with me. And then uh, later on, we read this in verse 46. Jesus called out with a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. And with this, he breathed his last. That second phrase, into your hands, Father, I commit my spirit. We've been thinking this week, uh, in, in fact, over the last month, about what it means to live as, uh, a, a, I suppose, a gospel people, a good news people. And we're following James's letter to help us to do that. We've been thinking over the last couple of weeks about the dangers of the tongue, about living at peace with people, about striving to live at peace and to let our faith be seen in our deeds. And in all of that, I think we need to be praying for God's involvement. We need to commit ourselves into God's hands, not quite in the same way that Jesus is doing so here because he uttered these words as he breathed his last I commit my eternal future into your hands but how about from time to time we just say father I commit myself today into your hands I commit the meetings that I've got I commit the conversations that I'm going to have I commit the, the the bumping into people who I don't yet know about um, I, I commit all of this into your hands and ask, Lord, that you be at work in those occasions. Let's pray now. Father, as we remember the significance of Good Friday, uh, we're so grateful for Jesus' forgiveness, his prayer to you that we might be forgiven. But Lord, we pray that you will help us to commit all of our days into your hands, uh, to allow you to take the lead and to be able to celebrate, uh, that we might be able to celebrate all that you've given us and blessed us with. So Lord, today, right now, we commit ourselves, we commit one another into your hands. Please, would you be at work in our um, activities? In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. God bless you. Have a really meaningful weekend and uh, I'll be back on Monday. Take care.